On the MCAT, you will be expected to navigate through the periodic table quickly and effectively. Of course, no one expects you to memorize the periodic table, but you absolutely need to understand the trends that are demonstrated by the elements in their organization on the periodic table. Now, those trends include atomic radius and ionization energy and electron affinity and so on. And you can memorize those trends, and you should. But in order to fully understand those trends, you need to understand a concept that may not be tested directly on the MCAT, but will help you better understand and therefore better remember the trends that you will be tested on. And this is known as the effective nuclear charge, or Z-effective for short. Now, the effective nuclear charge is really nothing other than the electrostatic attractive force that exists between the positively charged nucleus and the negatively charged electrons in the valence shell. Now, the Z effective is measured in a way that allows us to approximate that force without actually applying Coulomb's law. And we'll look in a moment at how we can approximate that attractive force. But first, we need to make a distinction between the electrons that are found in the valence shell and those electrons that are found in the inner shells. While the Z effective measures the electrostatic attractive force between the positively charged nucleus and the valence electrons, the inner electrons act as insulation. Therefore, the more shells that we have sitting between the valence electrons and the nucleus, the more insulation there is. Now, mathematically, we can approximate the Z effective as the difference between the number of protons in the nucleus and the number of electrons in the inner shells. And you see the equation here. Z effective is equal to Z, the atomic number, minus E of the inner shells, the number of electrons in the inner shells. Now, there's a quick way to remember the effective nuclear charge for all elements within a given group. And that is simply that the Z effective is equal to the group number for the representative elements. In other words, group 1A through group 8. So for example, in group 1A, sodium, potassium, and so on, the effective nuclear charge is simply equal to plus 1. And we have a model of sodium here for you to look at. In sodium, we have 11 protons in the nucleus, and we have one valence electron, which is indicated by the group number. Sitting between the nucleus and the valence electron are 10 inner shell electrons. And so the calculation of Z effective would be 11 minus 10 equals plus 1. To compare this to another element in a different group, let's look at magnesium. Now, magnesium is one to the right of sodium in the same period. Magnesium has 12 protons in the nucleus, and it has two valence electrons. Now, neutral magnesium, therefore, has 10 inner shell electrons. And so the Z effective can be calculated as 12 minus 10 equals plus 2. Since plus 2 is larger than plus 1, we say that magnesium has the larger Z effective. Now, as a trend, the Z effective, or the effective nuclear charge, increases from left to right across a period. Down a group or column, however, the increase in positivity of the nucleus is counterbalanced by the increase in the number of inner shells that sit between the nucleus and the valence electrons. And so, in effect, the Z effective remains constant down a group. However, the fact that the valence electrons are further from their nucleus as we move down a group results in a decrease in the attractive force that exists between the nucleus and the valence electrons. If you remember Z effective, you will be able to derive every other trend on the periodic table. Although you absolutely should understand and probably should memorize all of the other trends, on test day, if you happen to forget the other trends, always think about the Z effective, and you will be able to derive every trend from that.